Hi, come on in. And join in. It's the very merry life. Hi, I'm Mary Hendricks, and you might know me as that relatable AF mama over on Instagram who hopefully feels like an old friend at this point. And if not, it won't be long till it feels that way as we get raw, unfiltered, and very unapologetic in all things motherhood, marriage, sex, and more. From moments worth savoring to moments worth surviving, get ready to leave feeling seen and supported. You have a friend here now, so hey, take a seat. What's going on? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to the very merry life. So I have Chrissy. Lane, Lanier. Linear. Linear. Okay. There you go. Linear like a line with me. I knew I was going to pronounce her, her name wrong. We just started recording. That's why we're giggling right now because we were recording and there was just like a sound issue. So we're starting over. We're going to have Chrissy retell her story, but we're going to, it's, it's all good. Uh, in going through this, if you are listening, um, for the first time and kind of hearing this segment, This isn't going to be an exciting one. This is a new one that I talked about on the first episode about something new coming to season two. And Chrissy really kind of, to give credit to Chrissy, Chrissy emailed me um, and I saw this email coming from her and she had reached out to me well before this idea came about bringing on quote unquote real life moms, meaning people that may not be present on social media, sharing their lives, but have stories to tell. And she approached me and said, you know what, I would love to be on your podcast and kind of explained, um, you know, her story to me. And uh, we met on a kind of like what we're doing now on a Zoom call and just kind of, you know, did like a pre-interview so I could get to know her. Um, And I just love the idea of it because the whole idea about this segment that you're going to be getting more of is that, you know, there are women like me that have social media followings and we share our story openly and that's great. Um, But for every one of us, there are like 10 million behind us that have very similar experiences or vastly different experiences that you listening might relate to while I don't have that experience. Um, And that's what I want to bring in is just real life moms talking real life things. And um, that's, that's why I'm super excited to bring Christy on because we're just, we're going to hear an awesome story about, you know, hope and, and all of these other things. So Chrissy, say hello. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on here. Always. so excited. Yeah, I know. This is going to be fun. So Chrissy and I were talking beforehand when, before the muse or the audio was all funky, she was kind of telling me her story and your story starts with, you know, type one diabetes when you were, how old were you when you got diagnosed? I was nine years old. I just finished third grade. Yes, I finished third grade. Um, and that's when I had my physicals in the summer every year. Yeah. And I went to my physical and I was diagnosed with type You didn't have any symptoms before that though? No, that's I crazy. didn't, thankfully. Um, they caught it pretty early. Um, it just – back then they did – my my pediatrician doesn't do this now, but they did urine tests. Yeah. And finger sticks at every single physical. Oh, wow. Um, So they found my blood sugar was elevated and um, they found sugar in my urine. Hmm. Um, And so they sent me to the hospital that day I was admitted. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. I I have friends who have kids with type 1 diabetes and usually it comes out of like nowhere where all of a sudden just some symptom starts, which is wild. But- Many, yeah. it starts a long time before those symptoms. It's just, the you just symptoms notice. Like, yeah. yeah, that's wild. Mm-hmm. So in that, she type 1 diabetes and then in growing up and everything, uh, I'm going to let you kind of explain you were, you know, in terms of film, family building. Yeah. So I have um, three children, um, 11, 6, and 2, and my, I did not want to be pregnant because of the type 1 diabetes. Um, I don't know when I made that decision. I think it was when I was really, really young, like a young child, because I was just always, every doctor's appointment was like, whether it was pregnant, it wasn't always pregnancy when I was a child. It, they, they, those things came up like, um, I don't even know if it was directly at me or if it was more to my mom that was in the room, just kind of like preparing her that I would overhear. And, you know, my anxiety would just keep building and building as the trauma of that as a, as a child hearing these things. Um, I was told, you know, all these scary things that could happen to me um, with my kidneys and my heart and limbs and all these things that 
as a child, you hear it and you don't understand it. So I just kind of compartmentalized it and made it my own thing in my head that was scary. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And so pregnancy was one of those things that was kind of put uh, the fear of it was put in me that I shouldn't do it because. Yeah. Well, and I said to Chrissy beforehand, I, <laughs> I said, you know, the only idea that I know of, of uh, type one diabetes and pregnancy is steel magnolias, which if you haven't seen that movie, you need to go watch that movie. But I know that that's like a big fear of in the characters. Like that's a big fear with her getting married and then potentially talking. I remember like the scene she's talking about having babies and her mom is like, absolutely not. You can't have babies. Like yes. it's dangerous. And everything, and I think well, that's I think that's what did her in is in the movie. It's awful. Yes, and people like in college, people would be like, "Oh, you have type one diabetes." Like I, I I've seen Steel Magnolia, and it was like, yeah, was, like like oh, so this must be that's scary, you know. And those th- those moments too are moments that made me feel a certain type of way about my decisions about how I was going to become a mother. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that movie scared so many people when, yeah, whenever, sure. whenever anybody heard that I had that, it was like, like, oh my God, that, that you have that. And like, yeah. it was like, I, I feel bad for you, which was like a terrible, like that just, it's, I've grown a lot and I've figured out how to care for it. it diabetes is not like it used to be. It's a lot of work to make it so that you're healthy. But back then there wasn't technology that we have now and all those things. So that movie was, I mean, pretty realistic Yeah. At, for, for a time period. And, but things have changed so much that um, even since I've been diagnosed, I mean, every five years, things get better and easier, not easier. I shouldn't say that because it's a very hard disease to manage, but very um, to make it so that I can be healthier. Yeah. Not not it's not easier. It's a it's literally takes every second of every day for me to manage it the way that I want to manage it. Yeah. Um to be like non-diabetic. I'm putting that in quotes because yeah. that's what I aim for. Um it's not realistic and it's not always possible, but um that's what keeps me in a in a headspace around like I'm doing the best that I can. So there, there's nothing else I can do. I can't, I yeah. can't, yeah. I, I can't keep myself yeah, it's up. out of your I control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So in that, so you decided you didn't want kids and then mm-hmm. the story and Chrissy are going forward from there. So you do have children. So how did you start with the children front? We'll be back after a quick break. I opening moments podcasts are real life stories of adversity, encounters, and perspectives. They are moments that can lift your spirits, give you some food for thought, or move you. For the introspective mind that likes to reflect, discover, and find solutions or meaning in a complex life, listen to Eye Opening Moments Podcasts. So once I was married, um, even before we were married, we talked a lot about kids, my husband and I. Um, and I did kind of put, not purposely, but I put my fears in him. And he worried about the same things that I worried about, about having a type 1 pregnancy and what could happen and the what ifs. And um, we easily made the decision to adopt. Um, we adopted two children from foster care. Um, and that was our first, I don't want to say choice, but that, that was the, the, the path that we chose, um, to become parents. Yeah. And there was, we didn't try to have, um, children biologically, um, that, that was the choice that we made. Now um, with foster care, did you, are they siblings? They are not. They okay. are not siblings. They, um, our oldest, we were placed with him in 2014, the end of 2014, and then we adopted him in 2018. Okay. It took a long time. Yeah. Um, and then we were placed with um, our middle child in 2019, and then we okay. just adopted her in January of this year. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Yeah. So, and that was, I mean, they are the best. They're amazing. Yeah. And so that was, they were like my silver lining. That was how I kind of tried to heal from my trauma, my medical trauma of having diabetes was like, okay, this is the, I finally have a positive yeah. a, a silver lining that because of diabetes, if I had, didn't have diabetes, that, that, that prop, that wouldn't have been the path. I don't know. I don't think that it would have been the path that we would have taken. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't have known them and I wouldn't, they wouldn't be my kids and yeah. they would be somewhere else. And that was kind of how I started to come to like an acceptance of that card that I was dealt as a child. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, I kind of came to that acceptance piece. And then I kind of was like, <clears throat> well, it, it's, it wasn't. And that, then I came to this like denial of like, that's not fair that, that I had to, I had to, I made the choice, but I made the choice because I have a chronic lifelong dangerous illness. Yeah. And so I had to kind of toy with that too. And there was a lot of guilt with that too about, I didn't, I couldn't figure out how I could feel this way Yeah, about feeling very grateful, but then feel equally upset about it. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, I mean, it's a grief. I, I would imagine it's probably grief and all of that. And I've talked to, you know, multitude of moms. And I think that's one thing all of us can kind of relate on. And again, if you don't relate to this story, I think we can all relate to grief in some way. Um, it's if whether it's like gender disappointment or um, maybe it's you're going through IVF or maybe you're going through whatever, like whatever method it is, if it's different than the original plan, I, there's a grief in that. I think any of us, like we, I think we go in grief in small spurts each day when we wake up with a, an idea as how the day is going to go. And then when the day doesn't, <laughs> we all kind of have to deal with that. But yours is on a large, 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 large scale of the plan has to change a little bit. And, you know, I, sometimes you want to say it sucks and other days you're like, wait, no, like the new plan is a good one. This is yeah. a good one, but I still kind of, you know, wanted the first one to work out type of thing. Yeah. And I think this is silly, but there would be times where I would be at like a baby shower and I would like get emotional and I would, yeah. because I didn't ever get to have a baby shower and I felt kind of like I I never, my kids were three and two when I, we were placed with them and I missed all of that. Yeah. Um, until I had my third. <laughs> yep. Yep. Which we're going to get into. <laughs> um, and there was a lot of emotion that I had with that. And I felt so guilty about it that, and I, and I know looking back on it now that of course I had those feelings of missing out on something that every other mom had. And I yeah. was a mom and I, there were just times when I, I'd be, I'd be going to those things and I, I would be fighting for like the rights to my children. Yeah. And, um, my, I felt very isolated that like yeah. I, everybody has their problems and, and things, but I, I didn't know anybody that, that was, going through what I was going through. And it just, I felt very in my own head about it. Well, which is so normal. And that's, again, yeah. that's why I wanted to do this because who knows who's listening that could be very well going through something similar. And it's hard. I think that we, you know, we all walk our own struggle and it's, it's hard, especially like in a moment like that. Like I've had women come on here that are dealing with like secondary infertility and things like that. And they just, you know, they go to baby showers or anything that's like just a normal life experience, typically that we, we quote unquote say it's a normal life experience. Like it's just, it's hard and it's hard to talk about, it's hard to talk about our own struggles, like your own differences of what's going on. Because when people don't necessarily understand the conversation doesn't, people don't know what to say. I think that's also like a big reason why I wanted to do this is like, I think that's a lot of the times we often sway away from like people's struggles and, and meeting other people's struggles because we oftentimes feel very awkward and don't know what to say in response. So, you know, for someone to hear your story, like, I think we, we rather, 
pretend like it doesn't exist as opposed to feeling awkward in the moment and challenging ourselves to like, you know, figure that out. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a hard place. And I think that's why I'm, you know, I hopefully this, these conversations kind of help bridge that gap and teach people. Yeah. And I would love for someone to be like, like even with the diabetes, I, that's another thing where I don't know anybody. I do now, but I didn't growing up know anybody or, and I did, I did have, um, through social media, actually, I've met some type one diabetics and I've, um, some that live near me that I've connected with and it that was it made a world of a difference. Yeah. To be like, oh, okay, you this bothers you too. This you're yeah. going this with it's just so yeah. helpful to connect with people that are going through the same thing. Yeah. Well and that's why I mean I'm mean, in the show notes and everything. If anyone wants to reach out to Chrissy, you totally can and chit chat. And that's that's my whole go- goal for all of this is connection in some way and community. Um so obviously cliffhanger third child obviously you got to that point and the third child is a biological baby so there yes. was a real snafu in that plan <laughs> yes the universe was just laughing at me like what are you doing <laughs> i love it yeah so i um the it was right before the world shut down it, it was march 5th of 2020 when i i was at a professional development. And I was, I felt like I was having a heart attack. Um, I'm a teacher and I was at a meeting. Um, and I had to have my coworker, I was showing her my Apple watch. I was like, my heart rate says it's 20. Yeah. Like this is like, it wasn't, it was skipping beats. So it was like measuring wrong. Um, so I went to the emergency room and they did every test known to man, including a pregnancy test and, um, found out I was pregnant in the emergency room. And I, lost my mind. Yeah. I was, I I lost my mind. I was screaming. Yeah. I was scared. I was like, what am I going to do? I can't, I can't have a safe pregnancy. Like it can't be safe for the baby. I I had all these things in my head that had either been told to me or told to me and then misconstrued in my mind into something that it wasn't necessarily something that I needed to fear so much, but yeah. in that moment when I found out, I was I, my mom was with me. Uh, my husband was at a career fair um, uh, in a few towns away, and I'm texting him, and he's making his way to me. But I, the doctors were like celebrating and bringing me down for ultrasounds, and I was just like, yeah, no, like this isn't going to happen. Like I can't. I, I thought that I was going to have to not wanting to, but I thought that I was going to have to terminate the pregnancy. Yeah. Um, because of medications that I was on and just what I thought was the reality of um a physical pregnancy with type one and my mental state. Yeah, of what you um, what you fear, what what fears were in your head based off of it, which is totally <laughs> Like, I, I think anyone, if we built that up and you didn't know, and if, you know, whatever, just fear-based, I think that is a total legitimate, you know, reaction. I would, I would freak out too. I mean that, and then you know, it's a reaction because especially if you think this way, then you, you're in between a rock and a hard place at this point. Cause you're like, no one wants to make that decision if you have to do that. So it's. Yeah. I could, then I was like, that's just as bad. Like that. Yeah. That like, what, yeah, I have no, no two good answers at this point. So obviously you leave the hospital and you know this information and you go to your, I assume your regular OB and whatnot, and they talk you off the ledge. <laughs> yes. They okay. Definitely. We went there, um, deciding that we were going to leave the appointment and then take a day to not talk about it and then come back together. And so we went to the appointment and she really, my doctor, she knows me and knows that I worry about everything about health. I don't worry about anything else, but yeah. health things. Um, and so she really, she gave me the facts and she was like, this is how you control your diabetes. So this is the outcome that we can assume. This yeah. is how you're going to be monitored. She just laid it all out for me. And um, by the time we left the appointment um, and we, we got home, we already knew that we were, we were going to go forward with the pregnancy and that I would 
take her advice and her the things that she laid out for me, yeah, um, and be po- try to be po- as positive as possible, yeah. Um, and so we made that decision. Okay. And how was um, the pregnancy? Were you scared the entire time, or did you feel like did you feel come to peace at all, or was it I, how was the pregnancy? So I started off at the very beginning, very like once we made the decision that I was very excited, like, okay, this is what we're doing. And then after a couple of days, it, the fear already started to set in. Yeah. Um, since I never thought I would ever be pregnant, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get a pregnancy test so I can like take a picture of it. That was like my, my reasoning for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did that. And then um, it came with two and I decided I was ner- I was six weeks when I found out I was pregnant and they were going to do a viability scan at nine weeks. And so I worried about that. I worried about my hopes getting high and then going to an appointment because that was one thing with diabetes. Um, the risk of miscarriage is very high, yeah. um, especially at the beginning. And um, so, of course, that's what I started to worry about. I mean, I just worried about everything at that point. Um and so I decided that before I went to that appointment, the day before I would take the second pregnancy test so that I could go to it and not be like sick to my stomach. Plus that was when the the masks were coming in. People were like afraid to go out at that point. Yeah. So that was yeah. another thing that was just, I was. Yeah. You had out. to deal with COVID and pandemic mm-hmm. fear and as well. What that even meant <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I took that second test the day before, um, or two days before, and it said that I wasn't pregnant. And so, um, That's crazy. I feel like it was clear, not pregnant. And I was devastated. And I, um, I remember going downstairs and telling my husband that the kids were running around playing. They had no idea. Um, and I was just, both of us were just kind of like the life was just like sucked out of us. Um, yeah. And I toyed with the fact like, okay, this wasn't, this wasn't supposed to be, I, I didn't want to be pregnant. This is my body telling me like, you can't yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And so I, we went for a walk as a family when we couldn't do anything else. Um, at that point, um, couldn't leave the house. So we went for a walk and I, on the way back, I remember that I had left the box of pregnancy tests out and my son was eight at the time and I didn't want him to see it. So I yeah. was like, what, I got to go in there and get it. Um, so I ran in the house and I was about to throw it away, but there was another one in there. Um, oh, interesting. And I looked at the box and it said two on yeah. the box. Um, and so I have no idea. Was it an ovulation it. test? Do you think you took an ovulation test? Was there an ovulation test stuck in there? Do they do that? I think so. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe. That might be yeah. it. Maybe that's why. Because I think some some brands, I think, sell pregnancy tests and then they stick an ovulation test in. Maybe that's mm-hmm. what happened. Do they look the same? Because it was the I same. think so. I think they mm-hmm. look very similar. I could be wrong. I know. I, I think, think I saw. That that's not. <laughs> let's not. But hey, that might, I mean, I'm just going, I'm saying that because I think Cause... I've seen pregnancy tests that have that. But if it was, they look, the, the packaging's all the same. And I would so, know. Yeah, no, you would never. I mean, if you've never taken one before, you'd probably just whatever. But still, who cares? And I, so I, but I took that third magical one and it said I was pregnant, of course. And um, I just took that as a sign from somewhere that I had to stop worrying so much. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I felt that in my bones. Like, actually, I specifically remember laughing and like seeing my uncle, my late uncle who passed, um, like he had done that to me, like as a, not as a joke, but like, like you got to chill out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like chill. Like it was probably just a good kick and a swift kick to be like, stop, (laughs) stop overthinking this. Cause what am I going to do? Do this for the entire like nine months, just like a little thing. And I really, that happening, it made me so calm. And I was so calm throughout my pregnancy. Um, my appointments were 
positive. I, my blood sugar, like it was very difficult. I had to, so there's like a range that you, you, you shoot to be just regular, but for pregnancy, it's like better than a person who doesn't have type one. Yeah. And it's nearly impossible, but I did yeah. it and it was a lot of work, but at the same time, I, it, I don't want to say that it was easy because it was really the hardest thing that I've ever done to, to manage my pancreas, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The point of perfection. I mean, that's what they wanted, basically. And nobody can, like, it's just not possible. And yeah. I, I, they told me how awesome I did with it and things like that. And I just feel like because I was able to just, like if my blood sugar was high for a little bit, I was just like, okay, I, I did everything I could. I'm fixing it now. And I just moved on. And I didn't carry the failure into like the next half an hour because yeah. that's what it, it literally was minute by minute managing my blood sugar because everything affects it. Like it's not like what people think. People think it's like a food thing. Yeah. But it's heat, um, dehydration, too much sleep, not enough sleep. It all affects blood sugar Everything. differently. And so, and then add a, a growing baby. baby. In there. It's yeah. like, so, but I, I really, I, all of the fears that I had about being pregnant, why I decided not to be pregnant. Um, I really was able to put it aside and be like, this is, this is what was meant to be. I love that. Um, love so. that. So, okay. So you had your baby. And that's great. That I love that. I love stories like that. I just think that's that that was meant to be. It, that was your story, and you know, now you had you changed lives already because you got your foster kids, and now your adoptive kids, which I think is wonderful. I think a lot of parents. I think that's a side of you know motherhood that I think um, I actually said that the other day as, on my stories because someone had asked. I did like polls, and someone had said, "How did you have your kids?" And they had said, "Did you have a?" How, how did you have your kids? Do you have a C-section or a vaginal oh, delivery, okay. whatever? And I just responded. I put a poll for people to answer. And then at the bottom, I said, are you f mom through foster care or adoption? Because I was like, that's a big thing that I think people are, you know, it's more common than we think. Um, and I think it's incredible. So I think I got to commend you on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then with your baby, so now you're a mom of three. And how old is your youngest now? Three? She's two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. So you're in like the, yeah. 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 <laughs> She's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my middle, my middle is, she's the wild one. <laughs> hey, they're all wild. That's my youngest right now. My youngest is choosing violence and scares the heck out of me. I don't even know what's, I, she has a look on her face and I'm like, oh my God, something, <laughs> the third child syndrome. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I can just tell. But okay. So you're writing a book, aren't you? I am. Okay. And that's what I want to talk about also, because I think that's so cool. So you're writing a book on your experience with all of this. Um, no, it's actually fiction. Oh, okay. Um, I want to write a book, um, about my story. Um, I think that that's, I'm going to have to be in a headspace of like ready to just cry a lot, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I, maybe I will be able to do that, but yeah, I, um, I've always been a writer. Um, I wanted to do something with writing for a job, um, but diabetes yeah. um, was – I picked a job that was a career that was um, reliable, dependable, that I could make sure that I always had insurance. Like, And I didn't know that I did that. I didn't know that that's what I um, was doing when I chose the job. Yeah. Path that I did. Um, but now as an adult who can look back and be like, uh, really reflect on my decisions that I made, I know that that's why I chose the job that I did. In, in college, I took writing classes and I was encouraged by professors to like, why are you not doing this? Like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. But I just, I, I pushed it away. Like, oh, writing's for me. Writing is, I write for myself. That was the excuse that I believed. Yeah. Truly. Um, but I thought that that would be a, a job that would not be stable. Yeah. Or that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, and that scared the hell out of me. So I 
didn't do it. Um, and I became a teacher, which I love. I love teaching. Um, I teach kindergarten. And um, this past summer, my son just happened to just randomly ask me, like, he was like, mom, what what would you be doing if you weren't teaching? And he wasn't being having like a serious conversation. He just said it. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I, I would, I would be a writer. Like I would, I would be writing definitely. And he, he was like, well, it's not too late. Like you can write a book. And he just kind of like ran off and, yeah. and I was sitting there like, yes, I can. I yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that's kids. <laughs> that's kids for you. Kids are like, yes. it's their brutal honesty and just like their kids that they have the best like way of seeing things. Like it's just, it's blunt. It's blunt. It's without any barriers. It's with none, none of that because they don't know any of those barriers. And especially when they're so little, that's like the best thing. They can do yes. anything they want. That's why we tell them that they can do anything because, yes. you know, they need that, that reminder until life crowds and life crowds your brain space and then reminds you <laughs> of, of the harsh realities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So where are you in your book? So it's in the last round of proofreading. It's with my editor right now and I, for the last time, and I've put it into, I'm doing it all myself. I'm nice. formatting it and um, I hired everybody to like, not, I'm doing most of it, but I hired the editors and my cover artist. She's working on that right now um, and it's going to be published on June 20th. Okay. All right. And where, where can everyone buy it? Um, Amazon, um, it will be on Kindle unlimited and, um, paperback. And then also, um, I, it'll be other places too online. Um, and I will be trying to reach out to bookstores like in my area and stuff like that to hope. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, again, I'll put all that information in the show notes for anyone listening and whatnot. But I, I mean, I think this story is incredible. I think that I, I think you shine light on why, well, well, obviously like type one diabetes and then just, you know, kind of how life just kind of does its thing and it, things kind of, you know, take their own route and an unexpected route. But I think also just uh, what, you know, the things that you've said about like medical trauma and the way it's impacted your life. I think, you know, for me personally, I've never, I've never dealt with anything like that. So I think it's just a great perspective for me to gain on people that do have chronic illnesses and and things like that. And I, I commend you because I, you know, I, I thought about this the other day, actually, because I was, um, what was I saying? Well, my kids were sick and we were all sick for so long. Like we were sick. We got hit with something nasty for about like two weeks. And I was saying to Kevin, I was like, I am so tired. Like, I can't, like, I feel awful. This is miserable. I just want to feel better. And then I remember having a talk with them and I said, I can't imagine being someone that has to deal with this all the time. Like something, something that they're constantly always managing, whether, you know, that was a cold, but I was like, just something on the back of your brain, like always. And it's just, it's, you know, it's a walk of life that I'm not familiar with. And I'm sure a lot of us might not be. Um, so just hearing kind of your experience on that is a huge thing. Oh, thank you. So if, well, and for other education, what do you, what would you give for a piece of advice for a mom that might be in shoes similar to you? Like if they have type one diabetes or chronic illness, that makes them nervous about, you know, family building or life or whatever? Um, Well, I mean, for type one specifically, I would say that the management, it's hard, but it's possible and it's to to manage it during um, pregnancy and the, it's possible. Like it, it takes a lot of work, but the effort to do it is worth it because when the efforts put in for me personally, I felt the reward, which made me less anxious because I was seeing the, the benefit of the hard work in, in like my daily blood sugar checks. And I mean, hourly blood sugar checks, I should say. Um, and that it, things can be scary, but doable. Yeah. And that is what my pregnancy was for me. It, it My biggest fear, which is why I turned away from it, it was scary. But in the end, it was 
the most rewarding thing that's yeah. ever happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Scary, but possible. I think that's sometimes, yeah. I think, you know. And I, I think facing a fear and getting all the information, like, um, like looking back on that, that's what I, I was so scared when I found out I was pregnant, but then I took a breath and was like, nope. And I asked the questions and, um, had it all laid out and, and did what I needed to do because yeah. that's, diabetes doesn't have to, like I thought it would and did, t- doesn't have to take. Yeah. Yeah. And, it can add, it can add to your life, which is what yeah. it did, which is mm-hmm. crazy. And I love that. I absolutely mm-hmm. love that. And I think, I think that's a great perspective is, you know, something that we think could take away from us can add in so many different ways. And that's that silver lining that you're talking about. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So as I said, I'll link everything from Chrissy in the show notes. If you want to connect with her on, um, you know, any of this stuff, I'm, she's more than willing. And uh, I'll put all the information for when her book is out and everything, but I appreciate this so much. Um, I'm really, I'm really glad that you reached out to me. I, I, I said this, we did a pre-interview. I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, but we did a pre-interview um, before I brought Chrissy on. And I told her, I said, I commend you for like, reaching out to me and putting yourself out there to want to share your story. And, um, it's, it's a bold thing that I, I don't think I would have even done that. So I think it's just like, I could, I could easily do that, but I was like, I don't. So I think, I think that took balls and I think it's awesome. And you've, you've inspired me to now, you know, create a thing with this podcast and, um, I'm excited to see what comes out of it. Oh yeah. Well, thank you. I, yeah, I did think like, who do I think I am? But I, I do. Um, I, I, I would have loved to hear stories of people with type one diabetes in this situation. And I feel like I've, my goal over the last few years has been to spread awareness about it too. And so putting myself out there was part of that. And that's, well, and again, I think that's just a great, great reminder. I think we sometimes get in our own heads and like you just said, like, who do I think I am? You're someone, you're someone, everyone's someone that's, you know, I think we doubt ourselves and we think of ourselves as importance and, uh, in, you know, in terms of importance, but we're all important and we all have a really valid story, really important story. And that's, again, that's why I'm excited for, you know, this whole segment because, you know, social media for me, like I'm on social media and I share my story openly and I have, you know, uh, my following and things like that. But I don't, I'm not more important than the person next to me that has a very, you know, has their own story that doesn't have a following. Like my, my, my story isn't more important. My story isn't more anything, you know, it's it's the same. It's just, I'm, for some reason people follow me. (laughs) So that's why, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. And that's why I'm really excited because it's everyone's someone and we're going to highlight all of that in, in the real life mom segments. So (laughs) I love that. That's going to be good. Perfect. Well, thank you, Chrissy. Thank you so much for having me. Always, always. This is great. Another episode down and way more to go. But thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support this podcast, I would love for you to subscribe. I'd love for you to share it with others and post about it on your own social media or leave a rating and review. I cannot tell you how helpful and how appreciated those things are for me. Of course, to catch all the latest from me, you can follow me over at Instagram at The Very Merry Life, over on TikTok, The Very Merry Life. And even if you wanted to check out my monthly newsletter, you can do so by subscribing over at theverymerrylife.com. I'll see you next week. Stay tuned for more honest, raw, real chit chat. I have some amazing moms lined up coming on and shit's going to get fun. So buckle up, buttercup. It's going to be good.